It would seem that I'm finally at a point that I can no longer avoid with my myriad of side quests. I need to create a CAD model of the 5k engine. That's not to say while I'm doing that, I can't also include some other side quests, right? Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Mickey, keep one rolled for later, yeah? Eyes low, blazing OG, you know me, the young trends set a force with me like Kenobi. Knowledge in abundance that can alter your mind. They say I speak to the youth, I tell them take your time. Cause why rush it? Everybody tripping over public perception, the way you better move. If you watched my previous video, which I'm sure you did, you would have seen that RevoPoint sent me out this Morocco 3D scanner to help with some other projects. It would be fine to start scanning the block as it is now, which you also might have seen that I did do on the deck already, but the block is still a bit oily and dirty, and I'd prefer it to be a bit cleaner if I'm going to be handling it a lot. This is just some leftover developer spray from my initial test scanning, which worked fine, but even this is hiding some dirty little secrets. Naturally, there's a number of ways I could clean the engine, but... I bought this ultrasonic a couple of years ago now from Viva, and it's actually one of my favourite workshop editions, which is hopefully going to be just big enough to squeeze the block into. I was waiting until the water needed changing before I got it really dirty with something like this, so it's really the perfect time. But... It probably couldn't hurt to clean up a few other things while I'm at it, like this SU Carby that I stole from Angelo. The current plan for the KE70 is to turbo it with as little modification as possible. However, I'm thinking that the next step could be using this SU. As you can tell, it's seen better days, but nothing that a little love can't fix. It's also missing this cap here, but I think I know a guy that might be able to make one up. Anyway, let's warm this up and get back to the engine teardown. Having had this block disassembled for probably over 5 years now, the residual oil has done well to help prevent any surface rusting. Everything in me is also telling me not to worry about this dipstick guide, but I'm still going to have a little go at removing it. And yep, yeah, we all saw that coming. I can likely infer a lot of these holes, threads and channels when making the model. However, any extra detail I can get in the scan will always be helpful. So again, I'll just simply remove this plug. How easy was that? All right, let's clean this bad boy up. A fair amount of corrosion and contaminants for the water gallery is also softened up, which is good, though it's also annoying because it makes me want to make it all perfectly clean, but I'm staying on target, just a nice quick clean up to aid in handling and scanning. I got distracted while filming this also, and only just had the bright idea of actually topping up the water. Sleep's important, kids. As mentioned before, this is a developer spray that I'm using here and it assists with the scanning process. While I've also got the ultrasonic plugged in and warm, I'm going to chuck the SU in there for a quick clean up as well. It's already working wonders, but I'm also just going to agitate the grime on there a bit with this nylon brush to help with the process. And seeing as I'm going to change this water now anyway, I might as well throw in a bunch of other really dirty and oily things. Not the child, of course. But this cylinder head will do. Yeah. We'll check on that in a bit. I scanned the block in multiple sections, sort of in between running around doing other things, and then I merged them all within the scanner itself, in the same way that I did in the previous video with the heater control panel. Honestly, it's actually a long way from scanners I remember using close to 10 years ago, and the auto alignment is great when you've got enough overlapping features. That said, this file has turned out to be quite large, but it certainly could have been much smaller if I did a better job with my scanning process. I wasn't doing this all in one session as I said, and as a result, I scanned over the same areas by much more than what was needed to assist with alignment which is fine, but it's just something worth mentioning. As before, I'm going to use isolation to get rid of the marker dots and outliers and just clean up the scan a bit. Then I'll just follow the feature timeline and create an export a mesh for solid modeling. Now that I've got it all scanned and ready to go, I'm pretty happy with how it's looking. I think I'm ready to begin modeling, which is something that I'll do over time as I get some spare moments here and there. However, as I touched on before, I did already scan the deck and I've played around with the design because I wanted to confirm a few details for another little project that I'm working on. 
A bit more on the specifics of that later, but once I was pretty happy with how everything was looking in CAD, I did what I often do, and I printed a thin sample so that I can check it against the actual block. However, due to the large size and me wanting to print quickly, I had to split it up to get it on the bed. That's all coming up Millhouse, but before I move on, I had a question on my previous video regarding a comment I made, so I thought I'd address it here. Medec is referring to the way in which I would determine this radius if I wasn't 3D scanning the part. And what I said was, I was going to do this in a more difficult way, but after discussing- I was going to do this in a more difficult way. So this is the faceplate, and you can start by either putting a straight edge across it, or flip it upside down and put it on a flat surface. We're going to need a drawing as well, and you can imagine this is the exaggerated curve of the face. We're going to need two measurements, the height of the arc at the center point, which is a little easier to measure when there's not a camera in the way, and which I make to be about three millimeters. Then we also need the distance between the two points that meet our flat plane, that is, either our bench top or our straight edge, which I make to be about 124 millimeters. At this point, you could take this information and jump over to your chosen CAD software and draw it. Then we just need to measure the circle we've created, or before we do that, we could go a little deeper. And what we've actually done so far is measure a chord of a circle. A chord is a line segment that joins two points on the circumference of a circle, and actually the diameter of a circle is its largest chord which passes through the center. Half of the diameter is its radius, and with the information we've now gathered, we can calculate it. This is a simplified formula because we're trying to keep it simple, but we can also now double check it against what we've calculated with our CAD sketch. Then we could also make a drawing to which we'll add a couple of dimensions that we can use to double check our scale when we print it out, also making sure our model scale is one-to-one -one in the print options. Then we can carefully cut it out and hold it up against our part to compare, or, we could 3D print one and do the same thing. Which, in the end, is pretty damn close to what we approximated in the scan. Alright, now the moment that I'm sure is familiar to many of you, time to turn a perfectly running car into not that. Honestly though, even at a glance, it's a bit of a mess in here, so it'll be nice to tidy some of that up. The longer I look, the worse it gets, and I start to question my life choices. So this brings me to a point where I think it'd be worthwhile to reassess the project plans. Originally the timeline for the Turbo Corolla projects looks something like this. Baseline the straight line performance of essentially the stock engine and drive line. Drop me your guesses for the quarter mile time in the comments. Next was swapping the open center stock diff with a SIG weld locker and 411 gears. Well, Jess has been watching Twilight every night this week, so that's been good. Well, just back up and fill in a few gaps here. Instagram. No, no. Does <laughs> she ever become a vampire? Yeah, she becomes. Don't spoil it. Oh, I'm putting tomato sauce on something, and she's never used a fucking squeezy bottle tomato sauce bottle ever in her life. Actual Jennifer Lopez, no, or the or the Cartman Jennifer Lopez. Hee hee hee! My kisses taste like tacos. He's nice. We're very nice. Oh, yeah. Kristen Stewart. I should do like a quiz. I'll go to like a trivia, pub trivia night or something. I am so into this. <laughs> no. no, the bumper hit the hoist. Next was fit the turbo, which I'm currently doing, but then in parallel do a similar thing with the 5K on the K25. But now I'm in a little bit of a crossroads. In the previous video, I touched on this idea that I've always had that I'd like to try and design my own cylinder head someday, but I figure it's already been like 10 years, so why not just start now? Is that all right? Yeah. What do you got there, mate? Um, I, I believe this used to be attached to the engine crane. Why'd you break it? Oh, look, I can't help my own strength. <laughs> You know, I'm just getting here to snap the welds off to make my job harder. Along with that, I have literally more than five other cars that I have cool project ideas for that I'd like to make and show you, but there are only so many hours in the day. So I partly leave this up to you and you let me know what you'd like to see more of. I can either A, keep going with the crawlers, progress with the tedious benchmarking and eventually get to the other things, or B, 
finish the CT12 on the KE70, but start showing some love to the other projects. The 180SX has a fully forged SR20 making 300 kilowatts on E85, the R32 GDR needs the engine pulled out and a thorough going over, the KE25 needs a dash panel finished and the center console built, the stager needs tidying up and possibly a brake and turbo upgrade, and then there's that custom cylinder head design. You can let me know what you think in the comments below. Regardless of what we choose, this car is going to get a turbo of some description, so let's measure up this carby so that we can make a model of some of the features. Now that we've got this in CAD, we can play around with some concepts. We could change this stud length if we needed to, but I think it'll be fine to remain as is. And now considering this is an 80s era vehicle, and I really like period correct-ish styling, I looked over some pre-existing designs for inspiration. These HKS designs are right up my alley. I love the oversize and cast designs, the text on top, and especially how on this unit, the intake is actually hidden underneath, but that doesn't lead to a smooth flowing design. And first and foremost, we want simple. These are more like what I'm thinking here. I also really like the cooling fins, but first let's make something simple. Then we can worry about making it cool. I want to sweep a path the same size as the inlet, which is 63 millimeters or two and a half inches in fake measurement. I'm also going to need a way to secure the hat to the carby and I'll do that via the pre-existing stud here. So let's make a boss to secure the nut to. We're also going to need a way to seal the carby. It seems that a lot of OEM kits use flat gaskets. I'm assuming this is mostly to save time on machining because I think an O-ring would be better and simpler in application. Considering I'm 3D printing, that's pretty simple to add. But for now, let's confirm this initial design will fit and work how we want it to. While it's printing, we'll push on with pulling the rest of these manifolds off the car. And you can listen to the soothing sounds of one of the other printers in the background. Luckily, there's actually quite a bit of access in the engine bay, and I reckon I'll be able to unbolt the exhaust from the top here. Except, as always, one bolt is loose and the other is practically welded on there. It's getting pretty dark now, but I can't resist the temptation to stick the factory manifold on and see if we can't sneak the CT12 down there where I want it. And we can't. Well, we can, but it's going to be too low. It almost certainly won't drain properly. So that leaves us with a couple of options. Number one, take the risk. There's lots of work in making up the J-pipe and the dump, routing lines, etc., with the potential just to blow the turbo, which could be solved by option two, fitting it with a scavenge pump, which I did talk about in a previous video, but it's a lot more work, more costly, and it's not really in the spirit of a simple budget build. Number three, stand the engine upright which is even less in the spirit of a simple budget build. Or number four, concede and move the turbo to the front of the engine bay. Unfortunately, I think I'm gonna go with number four. So I can still utilize my J-pipe jig that I made up in the previous video. I'm gonna to need to model up a straight section so that I can push the turbo further forward, but luckily all the hard work modeling's already done. Before we press print on that one, our Carby Hat V1 is complete, so let's test it. The main reason I don't just print everything in black is because it doesn't show up well on camera, but you have to take my word for it that this looks pretty good. And the fit is perfect. It actually requires no changes, which is as much of a surprise to me as it may be to you, so let's just start making the design a little sexier. I'd still like the cooling fins, and given the shape and the 80s era, I'm thinking cooling fin mullet? Perfect. Next, I'll recreate the boss for the securing nut. I think I might make something to cover this, but for now, it'll do. And we're also going to need some overt, on-the-nose text on there as well. I am liking this, I would like to play with it some more, but I'm resisting the rabbit hole it's going to send me down, and I'm just going to move on to designing the O-ring. There doesn't seem to be many specific rules as such with design for an O-ring seal, however the main concept I worked on was this. Nitrile rubber is a common material and well suited for fuel and oils, etc. O-rings are listed via their internal diameter and a thickness. We know we want it to be at least bigger than 63mm, as that's the OD of the Carby Inlet but I'd like to be approximately in the middle of the flat surface of the carb here. Common rules for design for an external pressure face seal seem to state that the O-ring ID should be slightly smaller than the gland ID, essentially stretching the O-ring, but not by more than 5%. This will essentially give me my minimum ID that I can use to start looking for a suitable O-ring. 
If I approximate, say, a 1.6mm wall thickness for the Carby hat, that leaves me around a 66mm ID for the O-ring. There was a little back and forth to arrive at that number, but I found a localish supplier who stocks a large range of ID options in a 3.5mm wall thickness. If I apply a conservative stretch rate of 3% to the 64mm option, that gives me something that looks like this. And I think that looks pretty good. Next, I need to think about the squish of the seal. Again, this seems to vary, but info that I've found that sounds plausible suggests an ideal compression ratio of 25%. 75% of 3.5 gives 2.63. Some further examples for the dovetail shape, which I've decided to use to help retain the O-ring when the hat isn't installed or tightened, suggest a gland depth of about 2.7 millimeters, which is more or less what I have here, and an angle of 66 degrees. This will allow for expansion when the gland is squished, and finally I'll add the suggested inner and outer radii, which is about 0.3 mil and 0.8 mil respectively. Remember, you asked me for extra information. So now we can print that off and see how it's all looking. In the meantime, let's grab our new Schedule 40 straight template off the printer and get back to sussing out the turbo. I've updated these files on my website. For those of you with a subscription, these are available for anyone with at least a silver subscription via the download section. I'm thinking of placing the turbo somewhere around here as it should allow a nice simple bracket to tie it back to the manifold, but ideally also the block. Something similar in concept to this turbo manifold on the SR. With everything routed like this as well, it should leave a pretty smooth run for the exhaust, which brings me to another issue. I mentioned previously that the CT12A is one of the factory twin turbos of a 1JZ and that they actually are mounted in such a way that they share a dump pipe, like this. Obviously I'm only using one of them and I'm going to need my exhaust to run down here. I'm pretty sure that there's no real off the shelf solution for this because who uses a CT12 anyway, right? And as such I've designed my own solution, which is this. I actually designed this back in 2020 and I've now got a sponsor on board who's going to help me bring this to reality, which is going to be pretty cool I think. It's looking like it's going to have pretty decent flow out of there, but as always let's prove the design with a 3D print. I also incorporated a V-band attachment to it. If you don't know what a V-band is, it's a relatively common form of attachment, particularly for exhaust couplings, and it's also actually what joins the core and the rear housing of the turbo here. So, I'll fit up the remaining V-band components, and let's see how it looks on the car. All looks like it's still going to work well. Seeing as I've come this far with mock-up templates, there's something I made years ago that I might as well incorporate as well. I also printed the other portion of the V-band coupling because I'd like to be able to attach these, which are pie-cut templates. Although, believe it or not, I'm not the biggest fan of pie-cuts, unless they actually are required in order to get a tighter radius than you can get with a mandrel bend. I'm not going to go into the finer details of this right now, but this image of the dump pipe I made for my 180SX shows how pie cuts can get you an even tighter radius on a bend than would otherwise be possible. If you want to know more, let me know in the comments and I'll try and address it in a future video. You can also be gentle on the welding comments, these were some of my first stainless welds. But these pies that I've got printed here are actually sections of a regular mandrel bend. That is to say, 10 pieces, 9 degrees each, makes a 90 degree bend. I've also already got them, so I might as well use them to mock up some exhaust flows. I think most likely from here it's time to finalise the turbo position and then tack up the J-pipe out of the steel components. Luckily, V2 of the carby hat is also ready for testing. See how much nicer it looks on camera when it's a matte finish? I'm actually pretty stoked on this design, I can't wait to actually test it. The O-ring also fits perfectly, but we won't know about the seal until later, obviously, but it passes the visual check. And I think it looks right at home in the engine bay. I was also considering lengthening this snout and angling it out of the way, but we'll see how we go. So, that leaves us in a pretty good spot to keep moving forward with the project, I think. For the final product of the Carby hat, I'm thinking of printing it out of either PPA or PPS carbon fibre. I don't honestly know how it's going to go, but we're going to find out together. I'm just putting the finishing touches on the design, and then I'm going to have that available for download on the website, as well as all of the other things, and plenty more to come. I've got some pretty cool sponsors on board for some upcoming videos, both some of the stuff you might see in the background here, and some things that I haven't spoken about yet. Let me know what you thought in the comments, any questions you might have, and no doubt the criticisms. As always, thanks for watching. These kids are barely 6, 17, man, they virgins observe it. Depression put in our seeds to get straight A's. I know I was rushing home just to get straight blaze. You know the age, naivety, frustration, and rage. Suicide rates constantly raised, and I'm amazed. Graduating, maybe you can work the rest of your life. Education, forcing dreams and aspirations aside, y'all get the picture. These kids are falling victim to a system. Raising money hungry in a food scarce prison. And when that prison is the building blocks for a whole generation, it takes someone great to instigate.
chasing separation, know what I'm saying? So stand alone, fucking stand tall, dog. You can always get up higher than you fall, dog.